So here's another painting, another slot board. As you can see, uh, slot boards can, can be really fun to start on and continue on with the painting. And it just gives you something to uh, either, you know, use uh, as part of the uh, color palette or whatever, or to say, no, I don't really like the colors at all. But in this case, uh, I did sort of find this piece of uh, street paper that kind of, um, to me, I saw this color and it just, when I laid this over the top and I had punched out a couple circles out of here when I laid it over the top, I kind of liked how much quiet this brought to the piece. And um, as a layer, you know, I don't see why not. So my question now would be, do I leave any um, of this little bit of purple gray showing on the side? Or do I bring this paper all the way over to the edge? And I think I'm going to do that. So let me take a photo just so I know the starting point. It's always fun to do that. Oftentimes I forget. <laughs> it's like, oh, I wish I had taken a photo. But uh, let me just do that. And uh, a lot of crazy colors here. This is another slot board from long ago. So it's always fun to uh, dig into that pile and work on them. Slot boards are, are always meant to be worked on, so when you have the time, it's great to do that. So I'm going to line this up along the bottom, and um, I think the easiest thing to do would be to just put this alongside the back. Because I do plan on sanding, you know, sanding can be selective. You don't have to sand the entire piece of your painting. Uh, you can selectively choose which areas you want to sand. So uh, there's every possibility that these colors, some of the colors, will reappear. But the cool thing is I don't have to make that choice now. So I probably put more medium on there than I needed to, but I'm going to lay this down. And I've got some time to position it where I want it to be. And the, the paper, because it's a street paper, came off of the streets in Seattle. <laughs> uh, my good friend Kathleen Demosthenes sent it to me. She's a wonderful artist. And uh, she's kind enough to share some of these papers because in my small town, uh, you're hard pressed to find any street papers. Uh, we were kind of a rural, small town. and. Um, but it's fun to have this type of collage paper because it's so different from what you normally get. And it's, it's, the wrinkles are actually kind of cool. I'm going to grab some deli paper. Maybe I need a roller, so a prayer. Start from the center. This is a really big piece of paper here on collaging. So if I want to get the wrinkles out, you can kind of feel your way. Pretty smooth. This paper got a little bunched up because this is actually a piece of collage paper on top of this one.
learn the hard way. Okay, so now I flip it over and, um, you know, it's just a layer, but what I'm thinking of is that um, over here, I kind of like that one up there, I'm not sure. So you don't have to make any decisions. This is all part of play and So I like how torn this is. I like the, see some of the color from the painting is right here. So at least I have that. Um, I will cut off this excess. I mean, for right now, I'm just gonna cut it off, not, not as carefully as I would. All right, so then I could either paint along this edge, which I might just do. I could paint it like red because there's red here and here and I could repeat it over here. That could be kind of cool. I could also take some collage paper, but I don't want too much paper. I actually do want to have some paint here, so I'm going to grab some red paint, maybe cat red deep. And while this is setting up and drying, I'm going to put some paint here. if I'll cover the whole thing because I might like it to be sort of like that. I kind of like that little bit of blue. So maybe I'll come to the edge. crazy chaotic color palette that, you know, wasn't very pleasing to um, something a little bit more structured. Lots of collage paper, it's true, but uh, I like that one kind of set up. And, all right, so that's that. That's a good start. All right, so I have added just a few things to this painting off camera, um, added some quirky numbers, uh, did it with my left hand so that it would have less control. And I used a crink, um, it's like a, it says highest quality inks and markers. And I really like the tip of it. This was super black, it's a permanent ink marker. So this is ink, letting that dry. And then I scored a line in here. And there's some things that are kind of subtle, you can't see very well, but I drew in a line here. And then I, I also sanded the surface. You can kind of see how it's a little bit more distressed. I put in this red band over here, and then I used a little bit of crepaz up here. You can probably see that from the gloss versus the matte. Um, I, you saw that I, when I put this piece of um, collage paper on, that there was already a circle cut out and, and that circle cut out. So what I really liked about this uh, collage paper, a street paper, was this very graphic circle and, and looks like a P, but I'm not really sure what that is. Um, so I have this little line leading into the composition and I'm really not sure how much more I'm going to add to this. Um, if I add more to it, it'll 
like the value pattern is really strong. It's predominantly mid-tone, and then it has some, I'd say, more dark, and then the least amount, the, the smallest value is, is more or less this light color, which, you know, really stands out. Um, and I think the, the fact that I put in this dark red is what pushes it um, with the black lettering, and there's some darks in here and dark here of that. Um, I, the darks and lights are close, but what's really um, pretty, like in terms of a value hierarchy, I'd say that for sure, this is predominantly mid-tone. So that's where it is right now. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>